New NATO Secretary General Mark Ruta visited Ukraine on Thursday in his first official trip since taking office and pledging continued support for Kyiv in its war with Russia. Ruta met with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in Kyiv as air raid sirens twice went off in the Ukrainian capital. The new head of NATO vowed, when he took office Tuesday, to help shore up Western support for Ukraine, which has been fighting Russia's full-scale invasion since February 2022 and has recently been on the defensive due to a relentless Russian army push in eastern regions. Ruta expressed confidence that he can work with whomever is elected president of the United States, the alliance's most powerful member, in November. That could be a key moment for Ukraine's effort to ensure continuing Western support. Zelensky said he discussed with Ruta elements of Ukraine's so-called victory plan, ahead of a NATO meeting at the Ramstein Air Base in Germany next week. The two also discussed the battlefield situation and the specific needs of Ukrainian military units. Zelensky reiterated that Ukraine needs more weapons, including long-range weapons. Yes? We have not spoken for three months. Thank you so much. But thank you still for the call on my last day. Thank you so much. Okay. You're very welcome. I know. Okay, happy mm. to see you. Good to see you. You met already? Yeah. Yeah. See you. Great. See you. Secretary, yes, and to see your team when we're thankful for the... Trump held an event at a museum in Milwaukee, Wisconsin's largest city and home to the state's largest number of Democratic voters and second-largest number of Republicans. His appearance there was also meant to give him reach into the city's conservative suburbs, a part of Wisconsin where his support has softened but where he must do well to win. His event was not open to the public and his audience was to consist only of news media. Trump took questions for more than half an hour. He claimed the US faced its most dangerous time since World War II, citing the escalating Middle East conflict as well as the Russia-Ukraine war and again argued he would have prevented those conflicts had he won a second term four years ago. A reporter asked Trump another question about his recent decision not to participate in a 60 Minutes interview. Trump said CBS owed him an apology before he appeared on the show again. The former president alluded to a previous appearance with the show's correspondent, Leslie Stahl, in 2020. The interview between Trump and Stahl was contentious, and Trump cut the session off early. 60 Minutes said Trump's campaign had initially agreed to an interview before telling CBS that the former president would not appear. The network said its invitation to sit for an interview still stands, and correspondent Scott Pelley will explain Trump's absence to viewers. Before we begin, I want to send our love to the millions of people who are still suffering from the aftermath of Hurricane Helene. Yesterday, I was in Georgia to survey the terrible damage from the storm. It was terrible. And uh, Georgia was hit very, very hard. They're doing a great job. Governor's doing a great job. Everybody, they're all working together. And uh, we helped them uh, out a little bit. In North Carolina, the biggest problem seems to be, like, zero communication. The poles are all down, the wires are all down. And they asked me whether or not I could help with Starlink. It's uh, another genius concept of Elon Musk. And I called Elon, and they were having a hard time getting it. It's a, it's a hot thing. And Elon immediately got involved. Brian, I think it's the most dangerous time we've had, certainly since the end of the Second World War. I think it could end up being a world war. You have two, two hot spots, and you'll probably have a third, maybe, with Taiwan. But you have uh, Ukraine and Russia, and that's going, that's out of control. 
I met with President Zelensky, and I got along very well with President Putin. I think I can get it solved, uh, but we should get on and immediately have to. I think I would like to be able to solve it while President elect. If I get elected, I'm going to work on that immediately. It's going to be my first two phone calls. You know, you have to give Israel a lot of credit for being able to protect itself. You look at these forces, they shot down almost 200 rockets today. But this is not the way uh, anybody should have to live. So we're going to uh, obviously be very involved in the Middle East. This would have never happened. We did the Abraham Accords. I think everybody, including Iran, would have been in the Abraham Accords had I taken over as president. Uh, I believe, I think even Iran would have been in the Abraham Accords ultimately. It would have been great for everybody, and you would have had peace in the Middle East. CBS is saying that you have uh, pulled out of a, a planned uh, interview on 60 Minutes. I'd just like to, you to address that report, and if you indeed are not doing the interview, uh, explain your reasoning why. Well, uh, right now I went to, they came to me and would like me to do an interview, but first I want to get an apology, because the last time I did an interview with them, if you remember, they challenged me on the computer. Uh, they said the laptop from hell was from Russia, and I said it wasn't from Russia, it was from Hunter, and I never got an apology, so I'm sort of waiting. I'd love to do 60 Minutes. I do everything. I mean, I do you right now, right? Um, and you're tougher than 60 Minutes, frankly. Uh, so I like to get an apology. So I've asked them for an apology. Let's see if they do it. I wouldn't mind doing uh, 60. I've done 60 Minutes a lot. I did 60 Minutes twice with Mike Wallace, the great Mike Wallace. He was great. His son is from a different ballpark. His son doesn't have, I said, you want to be like your father? Just don't have the talent.